Welcome everyone to the granular overlay design <coughs> for the rural road section um, that we have selected. Um, this is Kiyomarma. Um, so today we're going to look at the data our survey team has collected and those data, um, analysis of those data and um, so a few bits um, before we go in details. Um, so the pavement type we've selected is a flexible pavement with unbound granular material. So basically that has a wearing surface with um, granular materials. Um, so um, those are just kind of I can say um, loose gravels and um, uh, compacted loose gravels um, with a uh, seal. So the ceiling is 40 mil SE10 uh, dense grid asphalt. Um, and, and the subsequent um, layers are base, which is uh, 125 millimeter granular base. And the sub base is 250 millimeter granular sub base. Um, the subgrade strength was found to be uh, found to have a California bearing ratio of five, um, which is really good. Uh, usually, the industry practice is um, to have a severe around four, that is the least. And the design traffic we have here is um, it's. Um, it's in the uh, medium, uh, medium to high uh, category. Um, and the test um, our survey team has done is called the deflection test, uh, falling weight deflectometer. Um, it collects the deflection of pavement surface. Um, so based on the data they've collected, um, so they've gone all the way to around um, 0 to 827 meters. Um, based on the data, uh, they've collected data on the inner wheel and the outer wheel part. So usually um, the greatest um, deflection or the degradation of the pavement occurs on the outer wheel. So, uh, so we've um, tried to plot the outer wheel um, data against the chainage. Um, you can you can see between um, 0 to 400, there's almost uh, a uniform picture uh, of the deflection. And from around 400 to 600, it goes up. And from 600 to 800, it just, um, if we can um, draw a straight line, so it does go up from that point. Um, so based on this deflection data, we have uh, divided the whole um, survey area into three homogeneous lots. So that means those um, road section has relatively similar char characteristics. Um, in terms of behavior and, and and the performance, those sort of stuff. Um, so based on the data, um, we have tried to, um, the segmentation was based on standard deviation and coefficient of variation and um, the average deflection so basically all this deflection data um, we try to get hold of um, the characteristics deflection so characteristics deflection is the maximum deflection in a section um, so uh, so so the, the characteristics deflection for the section one is 0.39 millimeter Section two is 1.55 millimeter and section three is 1.42 millimeter. So 
the measured characteristics deflection. So if we if we go um, have a look into the data. So we had our 45 data points for maximum deflection data, which we have divided into three um, homogeneous lots. Um, but uh, the thing is, uh, if each of the homogeneous slot has less than 30 data points, um, in that case, uh, maximum deflection in any homogeneous slot would give you a better picture of the deflection in that section. So based on, uh, on that um, uh, uh, practice, uh, the maximum deflection in a section one we have revised to 0.44 in section two, 1.47 and section three, 1.67. So you can see um, it's um, section two was a bit higher um, if we have used um, the theoretical um, the f equation we have, uh, but it's, uh, yeah, there's not many big changes. Um, so the design deflection um, using the design uh, to get to the design deflection, we have to use the, the traffic load uh, for design traffic load, um, which is six into 10 to the power six of equivalent standard axles. Um, so the practice is the design deflection um, should be more than characteristics deflection. In that case, we won't be needing any overlay, but um, in this case, uh, our def characteristics deflection is um, to start with it's 1.67 millimeter and um, on top of it um, that deflection um, also requires some correction in terms of seasonal moisture um, the correction uh, the temperature correction on the day um, on the day and also um, there is, um, yeah, so this indicates um, an overlay in this case. Uh, we require overlay. Um, so um, the overlay actually, um, based on the value uh, that is not within um, the parameter we set, so uh, so it uses a graphical chart to calculate um, the overlay required. So um, based on um, the traffic load we have and the value of characteristics deflection we have, we, uh, that puts us way off the chart um, to use that. Um, so uh, to use, to overcome that um, issues, uh, one of the way would be to do a stabilization of the granular materials, granular layer. So the stabilization here means introduction of um, coarser material um, to get a, a pretty good uh, well gradation. So when I say well gradation, if, if you have a similar graded materials, the, the, the potential of having more pores um, for that material is higher. So when you have a bigger material mixing with the smaller material, so there's no gap and then and, and the aggregates try to lock into the smaller spaces and there's this um, good um, resistance and uh, strength um, you know, as there's less porosity and less movement of the, of the materials. We've seen that the subgrade of our road section is CBR5. That means the subgrade itself has a pretty good um, strong capacity to hold um, the load so it can work as a good platform. So that indicates that um, so if there's any rut or shape loss, which there is, um, there, um, which there is, uh, there's asphalt fatigue and there's uh, 30 mil of uh, some shape loss. So, which 
is due to the failure of the base or sub base, uh, maybe the poor specification, poor gradation, uh, not enough compaction and reflection cracking underneath underneath the wearing core, so which may lead to failure of the wearing surface. So in this case, what we need to consider, we need to consider um, the pavement material properties, the gradation, subject strength, which we already know, uh, and the moisture content in and around the pavement. So moisture content plays a pretty important impact on the overall performance of the um, of the <coughs> whole system. Um, moisture can travel if there's more porosity through the voids of the material and, um, and during wet weather events, it may also act as a, a container of the water which, which will degrade the pavement. So moisture content is pretty um, important. And one thing to note, um, the road shoulders uh, are unsealed in this section. So um, there's higher chance of um, sealing um, uh, what moisture getting into the pavement. So um, another thing is the material we would be using it should be resistance to acid sulfate um, attack. Um, and it should be also um, um, resistance to any abrasion. So day-to-day -day operation and other stuff. Um, the test, additional test um, we need to do in this case um, is the Atterberg liquid limit test, um, which looks into um, the liquid limit, plastic limit, and the plasticity index, which gives us a pretty good idea uh, of the material properties, and also the Los Angeles abrasion test uh, to get a good um, material with higher abrasion resistance and also um, even though we have a um, deflection data but um, to confirm uh, more accurately um, you can see uh, um, towards the section 3 um, the data were a bit skewed so um, just to have a more confidence in the segmentation we have done um, ground penetration rudder tests would be really really helpful to um, assess make that assessment and also um, it's um, really important to have the uh, moisture content um, test for the materials and and the maximum dry density test for the stabilization um, so which will give us a uh, good idea about the material that we need to use um, so Considering everything, um, I think it is uh, pretty clear um, that um, if we do the stabilization and if we do the aforementioned test, um, uh, the, the, the problem we had in that section uh, would be easy to solve. Um, thank you. Thank you very much.